1968, hundreds of thousands of people protested all throughout Mexico in order to speak out against the authoritarian government. Most of the protesters were students, but there were also teachers, workers, and housewives. This was known as the Mexican Student Movement. On October 2nd, around 10,000 students gathered at the Plaza de las Tres Culturas in Tlatelolco. At 5 p.m., the president ordered the army to shoot and imprison the students as political prisoners. Many were tortured, kidnapped, or killed. The total number of victims were around three to 400. Jacobo Sabludovsky was a journalist around that time. He would often cover important topics like the 1985 earthquake. Later in his life, he would gain massive fame for hosting the popular show 24 Hours. According to many testimonies, after the event, Sabludovsky began his program by saying, Hoy fue un día soleado, translated to, today was a sunny day, possibly as an attempt to minimize the severity of the event, or because of the tight control the government had on the media. Some more examples of this are, for several hours, terrorists and soldiers fought a fierce battle, fierce combat as the army disperses a rally of strikers, shootout between snipers and the army. It is not known in which program Hakobo said the phrase, nor is it known if the broadcast was the same day as the massacre or the following day. Some claim that Zabudovsky did not appear on television until the 1970s and that the phrase may have been spoken on the radio. However, other sources claim his first television appearance was in 1950. Some say that Zabudovsky said the phrase years after the massacre, somewhere in the 70s and totally unrelated to the event. Although he is associated with the phrase, there is no proof that he said such a thing in any of his broadcasts, or that a recording of the broadcast exists. All there is against him are newspapers claiming he said the phrase, today is a sunny day. What's interesting is that Hakobo Zarudovsky never denied nor claimed to say the phrase. La Rosa de Guadalupe is a Mexican TV show centering around themes like kidnapping, drugs, murder, teen pregnancy, all of that good stuff. Over the years, it's been widely criticized for its bad acting, poor handling of current trends, and its direct attacks on many communities due to its coverage on pop culture. On July 12, 2012, there was an attack in a campsite in the state of Mexico by an armed group of 12 people. Around 90 people were attacked with 17 being tortured, sexually harassed, and robbed. The people responsible for the attack were soon caught. But La Rosa de Guadalupe wouldn't let this opportunity out of their hands, as this tragic event inspired one of their episodes, titled Adios Inocencia, which translates to Goodbye Innocence. On the program's official website, it is explained that the chapter Goodbye Innocence is described as follows. Carolina and Magda attend a camping site where they thought they would have a great time. It turned out to be quite the opposite. They wound up in a living hell when a group of criminals assaulted the camp and raped the girls, one of them being Magda. Four years had passed since that terrible period in their lives. Carolina has been full of hatred and resentment, until one day she casually finds the rapist and makes a decision. Revenge. Carolina's plan is to torture and then kill him. Only a miracle can save her from the anger that consumes her life. When the sneak peek of the episode aired on August 10th, 2012, the parents of the victims sent various complaints to Televisa, which the episode would air on. The parents protested and demanded for the episode to not be aired, due to the lack of respect the episode had for the families and the victims of the event. As a result, the episode never saw the light of day. Despite this, some claim that the episode did air at a later date, during mid-2013 or 2014, but this has not been confirmed. The only thing available is the initial sneak peek. The current status of the episode is unknown, as it has not been confirmed if Televisa still has a copy of the episode, or if they were destroyed, but 
it's most likely still around in their vault somewhere. Considering the initial controversy that surrounded the episode, it's unlikely to resurface anytime soon or in the near future. No Te Equivoques, or Make No Mistake, was a Mexican comedy show that premiered in 2001. It was a Mexican parody of Jackass. According to Tony Dalton, one of the show's creators, yeah, that's right, that Tony Dalton, during an interview, the idea for the show came after watching an episode of Jackass on MTV during a trip to the United States. Once he returned to Mexico, he presented the idea to Televisa, who approved of the show. His co-host, Christoph Rezinski, said it was more like MTV's other program, The Tom Green Show, a show where host Tom Green would perform numerous stunts and shocking acts in public, as well as many sketches as well as many sketches, mainly targeting his parents. A total of 11 episodes were produced for Make No Mistake. In them, the presenters performed all kinds of dangerous or reckless challenges in order to entertain the people present. Unlike Jackass, in Make No Mistake, the hosts interacted with people they met on the street, encouraging them to participate in the challenges, which was very dangerous due to the stunts performed on the show. This mistake would lead to tragic events. On December 21st, 2002, Marco Israel Lopez went to the Vacru nightclub, located in Monterrey, Mexico. Around 1.30 a.m., Tony Dalton and his co-host showed up to record an episode of Make No Mistake. According to witnesses, Dalton and Christoph began enticing the public to participate in a challenge that consisted of drinking 25 glasses of tequila in order to win a bottle of wine. Marco Lopez was chosen to participate in the challenge. Before starting, the presenters told Marco to say, this is make no mistake, a phrase said by the participants in the program. He then drank 30 glasses of tequila, beating the mark and winning the challenge. However, instead of crowning him the winner, Dalton and Kristoff encouraged him to have another 10 drinks, totaling up to 40. It seems like he did make a mistake because minutes later, Marco collapsed backstage, dying a few hours later. According to a witness, three Televisa cameras were present at the scene and recorded everything that happened. The show was canceled after this event, for which even Tony Dalton and Christoph Rosinski had to testify before a judge. The nightclub where the death occurred had to close since then and was demolished in 2020. To this day, there is very little information about this program, despite it being a well-known project for fans of Tony Dalton. Televisa has never made any references to the show, and the hosts seem to not be very interested in mentioning it. Only one episode, uploaded to YouTube in 2015, has been found. No Fear of Truth is a soap opera that began airing in 2018. The show is about the life of Manu, an urban hero, who has a vlog that he uses anonymously. He uses this vlog to protect those who have been victims of various kinds of injustice and to uncover the truth. The show has had three seasons, with the third having a change of many episodes due to a horrible accident. There was a scene that was simple for actors Jorge Sanchez and Luis Rivera, walking on a bridge placed by the production team. But due to carelessness, Luis slipped and tried to hold on to Jorge, who could not bear the weight and the two fell five meters high causing their deaths. There was no safety net or mattress, according to members of the production. They say the bridge was placed by the art team. Televisa had to give large compensation to the families of the victims. Several people from the media raised their voices to give their opinion, many criticizing the responsibility of the production team to not have any kinds of safety from falling. The series did end up airing normally, but some scenes were modified. It is said that the recording of the accident is guarded by Televisa to prevent its leak on the internet and is likely archived for the families of the actors. Mujer, Casos de la Vida Real, translated as Woman, Real Life Cases, was a Mexican TV show that aired on Canal de las Estrellas of Televisa between 1985 and 2007. It was created and hosted by Silvia Pinal. 
It was made in response to the disasters caused by the 1985 Mexico City earthquake. The program would reenact the real life cases related to the earthquake's impact, intending to generate support for the families and victims of the event. Eventually, it would become so popular, Televisa expanded the topics of the stories the series depicted, moving from stories relating to the earthquake. Initially, in the first few seasons, the topics would be lighthearted, like love stories, but would later become darker, showing stories of rape, child abuse, prostitution, and domestic violence. Topics that weren't discussed at all in Mexico at the time. Over the years, the show garnered a cult following for the way in which it openly talked about controversial topics. Because of this, various episodes were recorded and re-uploaded by fans, with a moderate amount available on the internet. At the same time, the series has been broadcast on several occasions by channels such as Univision or Galavision. However, since the show lasted for over 20 years on the air and had constant format changes, there is no exact knowledge of how many episodes were broadcast in total or how many of these are lost. According to IMDb, the total episodes are 1,521, but there is no way of knowing if this is true. In December 2018, user RatchetCVNGH made a post on Reddit noting three allegedly lost episodes. And while these aren't the only missed episodes, they're the most notable for their disturbing subject matter, creating the rumor that they've possibly been censored. Here are the episodes. La Ultima Sonrisa, or The Last Smile, also known as the werewolf episode. A girl fears the werewolf and insists herself that the monster does not exist. She is taken by her parents to a party full of weird, creepy people, and through a dramatic and crude handling of the camera, it is noted that everyone is anxiously watching the girl. At a certain moment, from a dark corner, or maybe from a curtain, a hairy hand, almost a claw, attracts the little girl and takes her with him. Sometime later, a bloody bag is found and a small hand is seen between the folds. The girl's father screams horribly. It was never known who raped and killed her. Sangre Contra Dignidad, or Blood vs. Dignity, also known as the Tunic. A wealthy but rebellious teen must take care of his little sister while his parents are away on a business trip. With the house to himself, all weekend, he throws a large party, and while drunk, he mocks and sneers a gypsy woman found on his way to the supermarket, and similarly insults his girlfriend back at the party. Meanwhile, his sister is playing alone at night, when an ethereal figure shows up at the door and calls upon her. She follows this individual and disappears. At dawn, the boy realizes that her sister is not there, so he frantically starts looking for her. Not far from home, he spots a crowd that looks in horror at a lamppost where the corpse of his sister is hanging, next to a sign that says, Happy Birthday. According to Ratchet CVNGH, a recording of the original airing was found in 2019 by a group of collectors. The person who found it initially intended to stream the episode, but after some disputes with other users, the episode was only shared privately with a select number of individuals. Although OP claims that the plot, cast, and some dialogue are known with certainty, the episode will likely not be seen publicly until another source is found. Both of those episodes are lost. The Reddit post mentioned one more episode, but that one has been found. If you're still curious, I will still go over it. Un Angel Sin Luz, or An Angel Without Light, formerly known as The Colors of the Sky, or The Balloon Boy. A single mother and her children live in a poor situation. One morning, a man approaches one of her children, making him believe that he is a new neighbor and promises to give him a balloon. Later that day, her sister returns from school to break the news to her mother that her brother was kidnapped. The woman goes to the police, where the incompetence of the authorities to solve the case is noted. The days go by, and one morning, they find the blindfolded child, a red balloon and a box with money. Although the police promise to find the culprits, the woman looks down on the situation and burns the money. As mentioned before, there are many more episodes lost or unconfirmed, so it is a possibility that maybe in the future, we'll have some more lost media to cover from this show.
although it was previously lost, it has been found in 2020. But I still wanted to mention it in this video. During the broadcast of the program, La Jugada del Mundial, translated to the play of the World Cup, Tony Camo hypnotized the actor and producer Eugenio Derbez, and then forced him to behave as if he were 8 years old. Because, as he explained, at that age, Derbez was very shy. He then ordered him that he could not control his nerves when telling a joke, and so when the actor tried to say one, he could not do it. So he bowed his head and put his hands to his face to cover the tears, and later stained his pants. All this happened in front of the camera and thousands of viewers who watched the painful moment live. Noticing Derbez's condition, the producers tried to calm him down as if he were a child. At the end of the awkward moment, the footballer Hugo Sanchez appears, who, still in a trance, Derbez would be moved to see him. Then, they went to commercial breaks. To date, it is not known if this was a joke on part of Derbez and the production, but those who lived through the moment claim that it was completely real. For a long time, it was thought to be completely lost. On April 17, 2020, Javier Alacron, head of Televisa Sports, uploaded a video to his YouTube channel, commenting on that event. Several months later, on December 15th of the same year, Alex Bautista would upload the entire incident to the TK channel on YouTube. And that was all I had for this video. Initially, not all of these entries were supposed to be from Mexico, but after finding a couple of good ones, I just had to commit. If you've noticed, there is one name that you've heard in most of these entries, and that is Televisa. It seems like a lot of the programs go awry in one way or another, and therefore some elements become lost. So that's something to think about. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Goodbye.